Patrick, do you want to roll us into an episode? I feel like it's been been a while since you've actually done the opening. Been part. a while. Yeah, I think my last opening, I'm gonna do it the same. It's way. been a while. Been a while <laughs> since I opened the show. <laughs> so he, here I go. Wow. <laughs> um. Yes. Hello. Hello. Wait, I don't like that. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> Hello. Hey, dear. How ah, you hello. doing? He- hello. Uh, and this hey, is the chorus of hellos with KJ and oh, Patrick. Um, only in English and some sparse other languages. Buenvenida. Just white people languages. It's fine. Just yeah. the white people one. <laughs> um, Konnichiwa. But- <laughs> no, you oh. ruined the whole bit. <laughs> it was good. That was It was totally fine. Um, That's fine. All right. You're listening to The John Chi Show, hosted by three Korean-American adoptees diving headfirst into what it means to be adopted, Korean, American, and more. And now, here's your hosts, Nathan, Patrick, and KJ. Welcome back to The John Chi Show. It is I, the number one podcast host rated by <laughs> Forbes and... Um, MTV wow. Magazine. And KJ Relke is here. <laughs> this That's me. Did you just steal my identity? <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, this is also a PSA about identity theft. About identity theft, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> make sure that you're using ExpressVPN so that people don't track your internet. And also, I think there's... Is it LifeLock? That's the other one that's always talking know. about. Like, you, I think it is You know, lock. identity theft is a real thing. And you're like, okay, LifeLock, get out of here. Sorry. If uh, you want to sponsor us, feel free to sponsor us. Yeah, okay. But back to the show. All right. The series is over. <laughs> Welcome back to the John Chi Show for another beautiful episode. It's actually really terrible weather where I am right now, and I Same. is Patrick Armstrong, one of your hosts here with my ever incredible co-hosts, KJ and Nathan. Guys, tell them what is up with your words. Uh, that was a very long solo intro there. I don't know how to. I don't know. Hello, everyone. What are you talking about? That was a perfect. I was going to try to make a joke, and then my brain was like, "You're done now." And I'm like, "But we just started the episode, so hello. I could definitely go a lot longer if you thought that was a long <sighs> intro." Yeah, don't don't give him the mic. Dep- well, it just depends <laughs> on at what point you cut into that. I, I need you to fly to Indiana and just remove his mic from his house. He's mm. about to lose mic privileges. Don't well, remote I, in on me and just turn my mic down. <laughs> my mic all the way down because you could control it from my desktop. And this is why we don't do it all in person in the same room. This yeah, also the last time we did one in person in the same room, we all were very tired and somewhat, well, our voices were certainly hung over. So we were like, hello, everybody. Welcome yeah. to the John Chee Nathan's Show. Nathan's voice was the most normal. I, yeah. My voice was like, <laughs> I can't speak. Probably because yeah. I drank the le- least as well. But hey. Oh, what is that? What are you trying to say? <laughs> uh, I don't think that you drank the least. You probably just screamed the least. Oh, that oh too. for sure. Oh, so. <laughs> like my natural register is screaming. And I was probably five above that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, well, anyways, anyways, that's not what we're here to, to talk show. about. We've no. talked about the live show so much. You guys already know where you can go and check that out at. But we are here today to talk about new stuff, new things. But first, Nathan, for our new listeners, what does John Chi mean? John Chi, J-A-N-C-H-I, is the John Chi show. We are here to celebrate and just enjoy life and Korean heritage and discover that together as Korean adoptees because, you know, we want to feast and celebrate together. That's what John Chi means for us. At least. Nathan, you know what I just realized? What? I, I just ramble? realized that <laughs> the way that you speak reminds me of like that pilot cadence when you're sitting on the airplane, <laughs> Airplane, you know, like, uh, it's going to be, we've got uh, uh, cloudy skies. skies coming into <laughs> Indiana. Uh, temperature uh, looks like it's a crisp 76. Um, anyways, oh. folks, thanks for flying Southwest. Oh, uh, wow. We'll be there. No in about other things to say about Indiana. <laughs> 30 minutes. I just don't know what other things they say. There's not much. I just never pay attention. You know what I thought when I was listening to you uh, explain (laughs) what John G meant? Uh, I thought, I think it's really funny that we've, I don't think we've ever said it this defined it the same ever across <laughs> that, that 60 some true, episodes. Sure. I mean, we're not Google, you know? <laughs> I, that's true. It's true. We're not the Goog. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> and as Google, no, we know Google Translate does not translate accurate anyways. It sometimes will, you know, it's a give real, you something completely off of what it really means. So. It's a real Ender's game going on to Google yeah. for translating. It, yeah. I don't so know if that's that is, an appropriate reference, but I'm going to use it. I don't know. They only what? had one. Do you know that source material at no. all? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> not even read the book. I was going to say, you've only seen the first movie. <laughs> not even watched the movie. So oh. I don't know. I literally have no idea. <laughs> I was like, it's a real, it's so wrong. There's a perfect, <laughs> I'm just, that's me. I bring references that I it, literally yeah. have no context for and no knowledge. And then of. just declaratively and says just it's right. all Ender Game fans. <laughs> I just <laughs> zoom out into the night. Just never nice. to be heard from again for at least that's fine. seven days. Well, Nathan, thank you for that explanation. That's why that's why I was coming I will back to you for refrain that. from pointing out the exits. <laughs> oh, we're on the plane. I forgot. No, that's the that's the flight attendant's job. That's not the captain's job. <laughs> oh, sorry. The captain literally just comes in and says, "Like, well, oh, I thought you were calling uh, me the uh, the the flight attendant." Oh, you're no, 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 the, the captain. captain. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. He's just like <laughs> come it. in uh, twenty minutes early, which is great, but they don't have a gate for us, uh, <laughs> so it looks like we're just going to be sitting on the tarmac until they clear that up. Uh, anyways, thank you. Go ahead, and uh, it'll be about thirty minutes. Okay. And this has been how do planes work with the John? How do boys? no how the, how did how to do the captain's cadence with the John Chi boys? <laughs> just, yeah, just the longest. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This <laughs> is what this is what people ever. come for. This is what people come <laughs> for. I mean, in a hundred and sixty more episodes, people are going to be like, "Remember when you guys talked about the plane? That was great." I hope people remember that in sixty <laughs> more episodes. I think they will. I think they like, will. This bit really resonated with me, and I thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> and that's what I thought Nathan's voice always did sound like. Like, oh, wow, you know, you're right. He does sound like a pilot. Yeah, you know, <laughs> 63 episodes ago, KJ pointed out that Nathan, th- Nathan, Nathan, Nathan yeah. sounded like a pilot. What did I, wait, what did I call you in the other episode? Nathan. <laughs> Nathan no, I think I called something? you like Nathan. Nathan or something. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Nathan. Nathan. Yeah, Nor- Nathan. Northine. It's fine. Even worse. It's okay. All it's right. European why? pronunciation. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> this is wild. This, this is, is what happens. Derailed. This yeah. is how we get derailed. No, we never. We didn't start on the rails. This <laughs> yeah, is us trying to true. find the rails I, so that we can actually. This is properly why I can't be the person that leads in the <laughs> end of the episode because I'm taking us. I'm not even on the rails to begin with. Maybe I missed the train. Is, we I missed are. the train. <laughs> I'm running behind the train. And instead of waiting for the next one to come around because it's public transportation, he's like, where do I go? Huh? Yeah. What do I do? Do I call an Uber? How do, <laughs> I don't understand. I am lost. So Are taxis still a thing? <laughs> so we're going to get back on track now because that's something I'm good at doing is bringing us to the track, not starting on it, but bringing us back to it. What are we talking about today, KJ? Happy wow, Halloween. Right. <laughs> that, I mean, <laughs> sort of. Yes. Uh, we are technically talking Happy Halloween. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think it, it's so Halloween is this Sunday. So for all you slackers who are like, oh, dip, I got to get a costume or you're you like, get candy. oh, dip, I got to get it. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's a thing, too. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's a, I live in an apartment now. I don't know what that means. No one's going to come to your door. Is that what you're saying? I mean, probably not. But also we're going to go somewhere else, probably mm. to my mother-in-law's house to pass out candy. Anyways, uh, Halloween is not my favorite ho- holiday in fact, it's probably one of my least favorite holidays just because, like, I don't know, costumes weren't really big for me growing up. Um, yeah. And I think part of it was, like, never having anyone to really dress up as besides, like, Jackie Chan. But then I was like, I don't want to. I got old real quick and I was like, I don't want to do this. And then I didn't want to be the Asian so-and-so. So I was like, whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, although now I have Shang-Chi. But mm. none of that swag is out yet slash is in my size slash I haven't looked. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, what's y'all's experience been like with Halloween? You can go. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, I, I did all the stereotypical things that uh, anybody would do in the Midwest or, or so. And yeah, I just... So you were an Asian Darth Vader, an yeah, Asian I, Winnie the Pooh, uh, an Asian uh, Woody the Cowboy. I'm tr- I was actually trying to think of all the people that you could be wearing masks. So like your ethnicity yeah, really wouldn't show. I mean, but, Superman. Uh, yeah, the Asian I mean, Clark we didn't Kent. have that many to choose from. I, I did one year. I started being a little more creative. Um I, I I know I'm admitting this one on air. I was a pregnant lady once, so <laughs> I, okay. I put on a wig and some makeup and put a pillow under my my. Sh- How my old shirt. were you? When I you don't know this? why. I honestly have no clue. It's it uh, probably 39. 13 maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, it was last year. Um, so I don't know. I I was a baseball player. I think I wore my my karate outfit. Like that was real, you know, unique. Um, <laughs> And so just little things like that. I never really dressed up um, hardcore, I guess, as a kid. I would do whatever minimum requirement was just so I could get some candy. <laughs> I get that. I think I dressed up a little bit. Uh, I remember dressing up a little bit as like a younger kid, but as I got a little bit older, uh, even before it became uncool to like 
when you're a teenager like go out and do trick-or-treating like i had already gravitated away from that and my favorite thing was to go to my grandparents house when i was supposed to be trick-or-treating and then pass the candy out to the trick-or-treaters so that's why that's one of the things i remember the most about it um yeah i just didn't feel like there were a lot of costumes that i could inhabit or even really wanted to Mm -hmm. um in college i was jesus two years in a row and <laughs> wow. i was the asian jesus no and jesus is asian so uh, you crushed okay, it okay so but see i was yeah. it was a more of a like haha self-deprecation uh, yeah. as opposed to i actually you know because how everybody thinks of white jesus <laughs> exactly yeah. mm-hmm. um but that was fun because i i don't know i don't know why it was fun now that i think about it i was really drunk but that's a whole nother thing but yeah i mean i didn't really feel like yeah especially as a kid growing up not a lot of things i was a power ranger i think the most of anything mm. i think there's a lot of pictures of me being a power ranger but again mm. mask yeah you get a mask yep. for yourself so uh so that actually led me to this being halloween let me think about uh korean culture and what they celebrate around halloween which the answer i think is they don't really um but one of our uh fans reached out to me and said hey during Chuseok, this is like what we do in terms of like honoring our ancestors and those kinds of things. And so uh, we got into a brief discussion and one of the sidetracks was we talked about Coco from like Pixar's Coco. Mm-hmm. Um, and just thinking about like Dia de, la, de los Muertes and um, how like for many other cultures, uh, Halloween time is really a remembering of ancestors. And so... I just want to take a minute and, and talk to you about that and, and how that all relates to you. I think knowing, or maybe you're just finding out if you're Patrick, uh, sorry, not to like throw you under the bus. <laughs> but you know, like, uh, you know, this is what you said in the text. Um, but <laughs> what that relationship is with, um, ancestry, with thinking about like heritage and, uh, Koreanness. Um, I did some reading in the Korean culture dictionary. Uh, so I think it's really interesting, but just kind of like, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Are you like, oh, that's really cool and also really sad? Or are you just like, I don't know. I'm just really sad about it. Or like, oh, I had nothing this. Wait, like thinking about my, my ancestors in I that think, way or? Yeah, like as a as a part of, well, I guess, so I'll just jump in. The, the part of it that was interesting to me was like, if ancestral rights are common in Korea, which also mm. there's some like religious stuff, mostly with Christians where they're like, we don't do this, but whatever. But uh, if ancestral rights are common in Korea, there's even a section in the book that's like where your ancestors are buried can help determine like whether or not you have good luck or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh man, that's something that I would probably never know. Nathan, obviously like you have a chance of knowing that because you could just ask your siblings like, hey, where where are we from? You know what I mean? Sure. But like for so many adoptees, you're just like, oh man, this is like, a thing and i don't know i think i i have the double whammy of like really loving the idea of honoring ancestors um and like honoring heritage that way but then i'm like well but like my blood ancestors which makes it feel more right somehow i can't really do uh unless i get reunited with my family and then like with my white family it's like you know it's just not the same i don't know um yeah i think uh, our guest last week, Chris McLaughlin, uh, when he shared his story, when he shared about receiving the letter from Holt about his mom having passed away and then him saying, you know, with such emotion, I'll never get the opportunity to talk to her about that. You know, I said in the episode that that's something that I think about and that makes me hesitant. That's made me hesitant to search in the past. And I think when I th- I've been thinking about Korea and home and like my first family a lot lately um, in the context of like what I've been missing out on uh, essentially and not even in from like a cultural sense, but just how like different everything could be. And it's not really any specific one thing that I've been honing in on, but just like these feelings of, you know, I I'll never I may will probably never get that opportunity because to be honest, I don't know if I'm ever going to execute like a full on search and I don't know if I'm ever going to pursue that. And that's on me, uh, you know, at the end of the day. But I think I think it just really it makes me really sad to think about that. I didn't have a choice in not having that. I have the choice now to search, but I didn't have the choice to have it taken away to begin with. And so I guess in the sense of thinking about my ancestors during like these times and like what that all means, it's to me, 
it's really honestly made me think more of the community and more of how other people also are in this situation. And it maybe in an unhealthy response, I want to like help other people find ways to get reunited and connected and, and, and go that deeper level. But it also makes me think about how I still have a barrier up to culture a little bit, even after all this time of doing the podcast and exploring more and learning more how that still exists as well. So even when it relates to thinking about my ancestors. So I don't know if that answered the question at all, but maybe no, it's I just mean, your totally personality. Does. I mean, you're, <clears throat> as you just commented about Halloween, your personality was to go to uh, your, was your grandparents' house? Yeah. And hand out candy. You wanted to give the candy. You wanted to be there to provide. And so maybe that's what you're doing now. Instead of you going out to have that fun and trick-or-treating, you're um, providing that uh, something that, you know, needed to be done and you wanted to be there to give. So maybe that's what you're doing. You're giving other people a chance to, to search or to tell their stories and less about you that. doing it. Yeah. So that's, I think it's a, it's a noble thing too. But um, I mean, I know about a little bit about my history of where my my parents are buried but I don't know much about the location I didn't because of the language barrier I didn't really ask those deep of questions at the time so I'm I'm not too sure if the location that they're buried at is special or if it's close to where you know they lived or where they I think it was where they were raised as kids themselves and I think that's where it is cuz my 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 uh adoptive uh, grandparents and everything, they're same thing. They're buried up in Wisconsin in, in the area that they were raised at. And, and most likely my parents will probably be buried up there as well. So it's kind of like a family plot. I think there's generations of, of, of tombstones and family up there. So, you know, maybe it just becomes a central location for family. But I don't know. I've never really thought where I would want to be buried. Well, I mean, I will say off of that, I will say with my adoptive family like i have really strong ties and bond and jong with like my grandparents and my and on my mom's side are in particular and like for a long time i was like that's where i'm gonna be buried like i want to be buried next to my like my grandma and i have a really strong <laughs> relationship uh always have and like i was like i'm gonna be buried here you know mm -hmm. and now as i've gotten older obviously and uh now married and obviously thinking about it in different ways uh it's a little bit different but i still think about but i guess just in that way thinking about how i have i do have that connection with like my adoptive family and i think that's the other reason that it makes me sad a little bit is like the sorrow comes up because i do have such love for them and then at the same time it's like man i'm really super grieving not knowing my first family at all you know yeah, I think it's interesting, like, you know, it's year two, and I think we come to ourselves and ask ourselves different questions and questions that we couldn't have even known to ask, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, like, like, Nathan, you were like, oh, I don't know, does the, the location of where someone's buried matter in <laughs> Korean culture? Even, you know, beyond just like, yep, here's where they are, like, maybe this is where they grew up, but like, maybe it is, maybe mm -hmm. where your parents are buried is like kind of your ancestral home. I don't, yeah. I don't know, but so it's just interesting thinking about those things and yeah, I don't know, just coming, coming around them. Um, but because we were talking about this, I also far and beyond, not far and beyond, but beyond just the sad parts of being an adoptee. Um, I think that there are some really fun parts into digging into Korean superstitions and, and exploring culture that way, especially like for as much Pokemon as I've played <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever, like, I just know that the there's much anime as I've watched or even like some K-dramas, although it's very usually pretty modern. Like there's a lot of differences in how they think about death and spirits and whatever. I think that relates to whether it's shamanism or Taoism or Buddhism or whatever that was interesting. So it's cool being able to read that Korean shamanism exists and is a thing. They have like a, a traditional robe and whatever. And like they go through this training and seeing ghosts and having uh, spiritual like whether it's like possessions or just like otherworldly encounters but that that is like a very historical thing for korea i was like oh yeah korea is an old country and that totally makes <laughs> sense but i don't know it was just like that's cool you know and it's different too like you know the grim reaper in korean culture is not what we think of which is you know big scythe and a you know a robe and everything apparently it's a guy with a with a hat and a white pale face Sung saja but yeah, it's just like a guy with a, a painted white face and a hat. Um, 
And that's the guy who comes and visits you right before you die, apparently. Uh, so that was interesting, you know, knowing that there is kind of different views on death or even ghosts in general. I mean, we think of ghosts all the time, but they, they've broken it down to different types of ghosts, like the virgin ghost or the, um, the ghosts that die before they get married and, and they have to have a wedding, you know, before <laughs> like a ghostly wedding a ceremony for the souls the deceased that's what it's called or the water ghost um you know if anyone is near water apparently there could be water ghosts in that have drowned i mean that's like that's some spooky stuff to actually get specific on things yeah like for that. sure okay but also though i was so excited when i saw that koreans had a king yemma in their <laughs> mythology i was like i know that from dragon ball z, dragon ball z. Um, <laughs> it's not it's not quite pronounced that yomra dewang which is Yomra the Great, but he's mm. the king of hell, which he, I think, I think they understand the afterlife as not like a binary right. or maybe tertiary, like heaven, hell, purgatory. It's just a place where all souls die and then they get sorted into different places. So it's more like, if you're familiar with like Greek mythology, it's just like the afterlife, you cross over the river Styx, there's Hades, and then right. you go either to whatever section or whatever section, you know what I mean? It's the way um, station. Mm -hmm. yeah so it was just mm. it was just interesting Predatory. you know yeah king yemma either sends you to the places you go to or you go onto snake road to visit king kai mm. uh so yeah I, I don't know i i just it's so interesting to think that too and especially thinking about like just part of me like because i i think about it was going back to what you were talking about earlier i've thought about being dead a lot but i've not thought about how like where i would want to be buried so that was just a weird aside i was like oh i've never thought about that um but it's interesting thinking about how old Korea is and having this sense of like all souls go to kind of a location generally mm -hmm. in the afterlife. And then Christendom coming in and being so uh, pervasive throughout the peninsula now um, and enforcing that duality of the afterlife, that there is a heaven or a hell or a good place or a bad place, you know, whatever. And it's like, that's so not how Koreans have for millennia thought about the afterlife. So I just wonder like what that does and like how that creates extra conflict in the nation and in their, like in the people's mindsets. I don't know. I was just, I was just interested. In well, yeah, I think the binary, it literally exists in the form of the continent itself being split, divided North and South, you know? So I think I've, re I've referenced this talk a lot, but uh, a Korea society lecture about Han um by professor michael shin he talks about han being a loss of identity uh and one of those and how it is so intergenerational because like the country itself is still divided it still ha doesn't have like that identity that it's lost after occupation after occupation um violent and otherwise uh and i think that's how stuff like like a binary like thinking binarily gets upheld uh, especially when your country is separated uh, in such a way. Uh, it's easy for that one way or the other thinking to just become or continue to be pervasive. So I think, yeah, I think that's super, I think that's really, really interesting. Also, fun superstition is the Gumiho. Is that right? Did I say that right? I don't actually remember. I'm navigate away from the page. Don't ask us because we I ask you if it's you, if it's. I can't right. pronounce any of these words. Come oh on. yeah, the Gumiho, the nine-tailed fox. Oh, nine-tailed fox. Naruto. Yeah, that's actually I said like, a well, lot of stuff. A yeah, I was like stuff. before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, before I was like, do we? Is it? Well, Nathan, you pointed out that it was in Chang Chi, right? Right. And then yeah. Yeah, I was like, I know it from Pokemon classic nine, nine tails. tails. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I was like, oh, okay. But, so, that was like a yeah a mythical being, but it wasn't like a scary like. Thing. He is and a Naruto. He, he is of, not nice. Kind of pretty. <laughs> so oh, he is mean. I, I did like uh, appreciate some of the superstitions that it talked about in the book, which is, you know, I mean, when Halloween comes around, you know, people start talking about how, you know, superstitions. We had a black cat actually growing up. And I remember we would hide our black cat inside sometimes because we were afraid people would either get scared of the black cat or try to kill it or things like that. And yeah, people so, are awful to black cats. He, right, right. And so, but the thing is, in J Japanese culture, black cats are actually good luck. So, um, so, but, well, you know, who knows? So I, I kept, I, we kept our cat inside, but, uh, 
I liked seeing these superstitions because some of these I've heard about lately, um, now being married to my wife, who's half Japanese, half Chinese, she has told me a bunch of these things like, you know, beware of, you know, the number four or, or um, fan death, fan, de- that's fan death. Literally. That was one that one I've, second. I've heard of the, the fact that they still even talk about it in Korean culture where they said they, it, they report cases on TV of how many people have died this year from a fan death. And yeah. For those who don't I, know what that means, the fan death is people dying while their fan is on in their room, and they don't know if it could be hyperthermia, asphyxiation, uh, with you know carbon dioxide intoxication, like like there's all kinds of things. Like what? Yeah. What? It's ridiculous. Also, I distinctly remember like being terrified of my ceiling fan as a child, like worried that it would like because it was kind of like off balance. So I was like, oh. what if it like loses and it like falls and like crushes my leg? Like I can't lose any more appendages. Like, I can't, oh, you know what I mean? So I was like, oh, no. But then I was like, oh, Koreans also are like fan death. And I was like, oh, OK, cool. That makes me feel connected. But now I'm like, wait, it's also <laughs> it's not just ceiling fans. It's just all fans. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what that's so dumb i don't know like <laughs> it, 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 it says it's not even from the fan physically hitting you it's, it's yeah it's just from so, being on you're like yeah, all right whatever it's just for being on but that's uh, really funny like also the one of the superstitions was chopsticks because that's something i've never done i think i did it once and i got you know i got uh told that that was bad luck but you don't poke um chopsticks in a bowl of rice don't and, leave them vertically in your bowl. Yeah, vertically yeah. in the rice. And I and I remember seeing and hearing that, but I never really knew the reason. And the book explains that in uh, some culture, you actually put incense in a bowl of rice at a burial or at a funeral. And so it represents looking like that where someone's died. And it's like, oh, that's why. So My favorite one is never clip your nails at night, <laughs> which I've just read and I am in my brain dead from laughter uh, <laughs> this says or you did you it cut, last night right if you cut your nails at night rats will come into your home and eat the clippings off the floor then transform into a human and take your form <laughs> i think that is wild well if you left your clippings I gotta look on the into floor that. you might deserve to die because that's just gross don't don't leave your clippings on the well floor. you better not come over to my house oh, i bite my nails off and spit them on Good the ground know. gross it says <laughs> that the superstition that. was originated before nail clippers and electricity, electricity. So, yeah <laughs> mm. i was like it's it's pretty old and uh clipping your nail to poor clipping your poor nails light. at night with a dim light is dangerous it says <laughs> cleaning up part was also <laughs> difficult i'm assuming before electricity like what were you cutting your nails with a knife it was probably just yeah, filing. Maybe. In my right? head, I imagine like a full length sword. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> All right, it's time for your nail clippings. That's <laughs> <laughs> like a guillotine uh, for your nails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the infirmary. I don't know what it's called. Oh, back in sorry about that toe. Oh, that's. I just hilarious. wanted to cut my nails. <laughs> I mean, I, I hate cutting my kids' nails actually because I always worry that they're going to like jerk or move really quickly, and I'm going to cut a toe off. So. You think you're going to cut because you also whole toe well, off. he also uses <laughs> oh, a full sword. Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's I'm going like, old he's school the way. Yeah. He's like, he buys yeah. those knives, those knife sets. And, but yeah. he only uses them to cut off. David is like, Allison, can I borrow your katana? Do you have one of those? <laughs> Where's that sword we bought at the thrift yeah. store the other day? <laughs> I need to cut the kid's toes. And my I mean, wet nails. stones to sharpen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, amazing. And the hilarious. other thing was don't whistle at night too, which is so supposedly whistling attracts snakes. So I thought that was funny because my kids frequently whistle at night. So I also mm. whistle at night. You, okay. Why do you whistle so much? I like to whistle. Whistle's right. fun. No, I mean I don't disagree. I just I don't whistle so much. I don't know. Uh the one that I thought was interesting was don't write people's names in red because mm-hmm. red is associated with blood and mm-hmm. blood means death. So writing people's name in red is death for them. So it's great for hit lists, but not for friends lists. <laughs> hey, and that's the show. Okay, bye. <laughs> Dang, that was great. That was great. It's not. What? That was great. You write that down. <laughs> I have had it prepared, recorded. It's recorded. I have a prepared statement right here. Oh, okay, yeah, he he's did. just got a list of jokes. <laughs> he wrote it in red. The only one. Yeah. He circled it. He's like, all right, but I'm going for this one. It's, it's just big. Are you guys superstitious <laughs> yeah, just, at all, yeah. though? Like, do you have any superstitions yourselves? Um. Like, are you scared of the number 13 or No, four I used or... to, when I was younger, uh, not like much younger, but uh, when I was younger and a better Cowboys fan, I had a lot of superstitions around 
when was the right time to wear my jersey or not wear my jersey so that like <laughs> like a lot of my superstitions exist around sports, sports. you know okay. uh but I not around that. like life and death kind of stuff or less like you know step on a crack break your mother's back kind of business yeah I don't know. The only one I can think of that I ever subscribed to for even a little bit of time was the red lighter one. I don't know if they said, like, you don't use a red lighter because that's like Bob Marley died with a red lighter and like a bunch of people died with red lighters in their hands. So (laughs) that was and that might have just been a random person thing. But (laughs) I think that that's the one that keeps coming to my mind. But I had, I mean, sports ones, I'm superstitious about, like, if I start watching a Purdue game, I have to watch the entire thing uh, mm. because they're either, if I turn it off, they're for sure going to lose. Uh, <laughs> and if I keep it on, we're probably going to win. And we just mm. did in a big football game. They got go. us ranked hmm. for the yeah. first time in a long time in football. So sports I, ha- I have adopted a few from my sports life ball. again. Non non uh, sport related, but mine are more living related. So, for example, your bed has to be facing a certain direction; can't be facing, I think, north. Okay. Oh yeah, I've heard of that one. Y- your front door cannot be leading into a staircase. So, if you one. open your front door and there's a staircase right there in front of you pointing out, that's bad because the energy of inside the house goes down the stairs. Oh, right so it's like feng door. shui related. Yeah. So there's okay. a lot of those. Yeah, and then not having your house at the end of a cul de sac where. The, all, again, all the bad energy of the street mm. goes right into your house. So. Well, dang it. That's where my house is. Is, is it no, right at the end or on a corner yeah, of no, the it's end? No, it's in the middle. We well, like middle it because the there's nobody behind us or Dope, on our time side. Time to move. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you're not allowed to move on certain days because yeah, those days right. have evil spirits. That's Korean. another weird Korean tradition, superstition. Then it's like, days have evil spirits, so you can't move on them. So then the days that you can move, and it like depends. It's like a moving target so that some days, it's like based on the lunar calendar. Some days, if you're moving to this position, they're like, and they, the weird. moving companies charge more or something. So, yeah. 9, 10, 19, 20, 29, and 30 are good days to move on. So there you go. Yeah. I will yeah. say that I did have, I was superstitious of walking under a ladder. Wasn't isn't mm. that one? I, that sure, is one, I, yes. For a long time, I wouldn't I feel like walk that's under. more safety related, but yeah. Oh, well, we I didn't know we were uh, honed in on just one single one. Like, you know, breaking, like breaking a related? mirror? Like I always, I worried about breaking mirrors. I just really? did that yeah. specifically for safety because I did not want to get cut by the glass. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's why i, I was scared uh, of it. what about i don't know at this salt? point oh do y- yeah do y'all do the salt over your shoulder thing uh-huh. just to I piss to. or just to make people mad okay. <laughs> just throw I... it in their eyes what? Yeah, just... <laughs> oh yeah the salt <laughs> you remember that scene in dumb and dumber where he throws the whole salt shaker oh yeah <laughs> yeah no <laughs> i've not seen that movie <gasps> it's Damn fine me. god i i <laughs> No, I mean, I'm sure plenty of people my age have seen it. I just wasn't allowed to see it. Understandable. So as I know. And then I never got around to it. I was like, the moment has passed me by. Also understandable. I, a lot with American superstitions, I will just push my luck. I'll just be like, oh, I'll, I'll walk under that ladder. What? I Who's do coming for me? Challenge I'll, accepted. I'll knock some salt over and not throw it over my shoulder. I'll not knock on wood. What's up? What you got? You know, just like, what's coming for me? So I don't know. maybe that's just the, yeah, the, the rashness of youth, but <laughs> in my young age, I'm invincible. YOLO. I get it. YOLO. <laughs> well, speaking of YOLO, should we jump into a snack that none of us have had for the first <laughs> nice time? Because, way. you know what I'm saying? You only live once. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I From- think we're going to go with the YOLO Rolos or something. That's what nope. you were going to say. Nope, what? because I'm a millennial. That's uh, why. Okay. All right. We're going to jump into a snack. Show. Happy Halloween. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the John Chi Show eating portion. <laughs> eating food or drinking. Portion. But food portion. Food portion. That's what, you said. Yeah. That's what you've what you called it the last Mook few bang. times. I've called food. Yeah, we're food portion. Bang. We're just going to eat and you're going to listen. Ooh, um, yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> terrifying and sensual at the same time. <laughs> what are we eating, guys? Today. I mean, Halloween, so. Well, it's not Halloween. We Almost got Halloween. Like half a week till Halloween. But today we're eating Suje's Targona, handmade Targona. Uh, mm-hmm. If that word sounds familiar, but I feel like I'm mispronouncing it because I haven't watched it yet. It's because you might have heard it from the hit Netflix series Squid Game. So uh, pretty exciting. I actually know about this from 
a boba tea place, a local boba tea place saying like, hey, we're selling this now. And it's really exciting to me because I grew up eating this and now it's really popular and now I get to sell it and continue oh, you're to selling it? my culture. Hmm. No, not me personally, but this, but this place. This, yeah. Huh. Um, so yeah, that was exciting. But well, I, I don't know the packaging. Uh, I, I like the packaging, but the same thing is I bought it because it I didn't actually know what it was at the time I bought it. I just like oh. the word that said Korean traditional candy. And I was thinking, oh, that sounds fun. Where does so, it say that? On the back in, in English. Oh. <laughs> right, up, right up top. Yeah, right on up the, up the nutrition top. label that they just yeah. stuck on. Stuck on the back. So yeah. traditional Korean candy made me curious. Um, not, you know, even knowing at the time when I bought it that it was the same thing that they use in Squid Game. No spoiler alert. But, um, yeah, the packaging is very, that what would you call Hozo. this? Doesn't that look design. like cacao? Like, uh, like cacao? yeah, it's got that like art style that looks like yeah, cacao also, talk, cacao or, talk stuff. Yeah, maybe at the bottom of the designer. Yeah, the design is by Hozo. Oh, um, but it's just really cute, like Korean cartoon. It's similar to like what you'd find on stationery or mm-hmm. just like really round characters. Um, yeah, but yeah, I love the design. It's a very flat look, and then yeah. I already opened it. I like I the I like good. the bird in the bottom. It makes me think that good. he's getting. He's like, hey, buddy. Let me get a piece of that cookie. That's what his voice sounds like to me. So yeah. for the the listeners, the little pieces in here are little squares, and mm. it looks like like I mean like a, a sugary honeycomb. It's like the size of a Chex mix. Oh, these are really hard. Yeah, I, I mean if it's, I if it's it was like a be honeycomb, like, I thought it was gonna be a oh. biscuit, but I was super wrong. Interesting. But it's airy inside if you chew it. Oh man. Whoa. There's another candy thing. Whoa, yeah. It's just straight sugar. Come on, guys. I didn't know Keep that. Up. I don't know anything about this. First it ingredient, is corn sugar, cornstarch, and sodium bicarbonate. That's yep. the three ingredients. Very wow. little nutritional information. Other this than is like sugar. when it, you know what cotton candy tastes like at the end oh, of its yeah. process in your mouth? It's like that. That's mm. a great description. Yeah. Literally exactly what it tastes like. So I've had this other candy. I think it was made by Cadbury, uh, but it's like called their their honeycomb candy and it, it tastes very similar to this it just tastes like like straight sugar but kind of airy on the inside so it's well, not like a hard sugar but it's I don't it know. really does taste like cotton candy uh-huh. like even the consistency I mean, it turns cotton into candy cotton. is also pure sugar right but even so, like consistency at the end of it i feel like the stickiness uh-huh it's a little very darker though you know than cotton candy well, oh yeah well it's also not fluffy True, you right. know, it's just like mm-hmm. it's it's the hard it's crystallized, solid. version. but it almost tastes like it has like not maple syrup in it, but you know, it's like that kind of that honey, darker. I think. Maybe it's the honey, yeah. But it doesn't say honey's in this; it just says sugar cornstarch. So, well, it's probably just like beginning to caramelize as yeah. its form. I feel like I'm um, going to have to go to the dentist after this, though. Yeah, me too. This is good, and I can only eat not that much of it. Yeah, I mean, one more. Well, it's a good say, thing though, because last one week, piece is one serving and 26% of your daily sugar. So all right. if you eat I'll four say, of these, you're at 100%. I'll say after the last episode's food, this is like 100 yeah. out, of one, out of five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it is. It is a little caramelized. I can taste that. Like almost caramelized to the point of being burned a little bit. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. that's dog Yeah, there you go. We got some traditional candy. And so... Is there like... Can you explain to me, as someone who has not yet watched Squid Game and is going to, can you explain anything about the significance of Dalgona without spoiling any of the show? Mm. No. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean, there's not that much reference in it as a historical Korean thing other than it's a, a candy that it, in Korea and the, yeah. there's a specific thing you need to, you know. It's a game. A game, I guess, with it. That's about oh, it. interesting. It's okay, part yeah. of a game. So it's part of Let's one of the games that. that's played. Is it like yeah. a piece of a game? Is it like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't. Hey, hey, don't hey. Understand. We yeah, gave you enough information. You can't even tell me that. <laughs> nope, sorry. We probably wow. can, but I don't feel like I'm going to be able to. Visually. Here, visually. <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, if I don't know if I can, I can explain it well enough without spoiling it. Huh. Yeah. I feel like the game is rooted in Korean culture. Yeah, I mean, that sure goes, and I'm so. sure anybody that knows that would is like screaming right now. You guys are idiots. Why do you know how to explain this? We're not idiots. But. We're just ignorant. It's fine. And right. we just don't want to spoil the show. For, no, yeah, uh, that's what I mean. I was like, because I'm curious, because like, I, you know, it's a K drama is obviously meant it's created with Korean people in mind. So us Americans coming into it, you're like, I don't know. I don't know the first thing about this candy or what they're doing, but. 
I also haven't seen it, so I'm just like, I don't know. So, yeah. okay, that's fine. Yeah. I guess I'll just have to watch it like just however many it, other man. billion people have watched it. <laughs> you become to. one of the sheeple. Hey, I have a friend who's actually going to dress up as the <laughs> two friends actually who are going to dress up for Halloween this year as Squid Game. So, oh, I feel how original! That I know, right? <laughs> I feel that there's going to be a lot of people actually wow. do that this year. So, Patrick coming with that's a hot all take. I thought, that's all I think about that. Does that count as yellow face? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you if wear a mask. If they're nah, white, it's, yeah, you're wearing a mask. So oh, okay, there see, are, this is what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know anything. There are a lot of articles and and things that people have written about how you can not be appropriative uh, with your costuming in this mm. Halloween. Hooray! Interesting. Well, back to the what we're dressing up as. You should wait till you see mine. So because you're going to be a pregnant lady again, problematic. Gotcha. <laughs> but you leveled up the costume, yes. <laughs> Yes. No. Um, it'll be in conjunction with my kids' costume. So, oh, what are your kids going as? The oh, Seven Dwarves. But gonna he's going to be Snow White. You're just going to watch. There's All a right. spoiler on my wife's Instagram. If if you already, if you follow wow. that, so that is. There you go. Okay. If you follow well, that he says. <laughs> If you, yeah, if she has allowed you to follow yeah, her. She, she sometimes is like, why are all these people trying to like follow me all of a sudden? It's like, well, oh, sorry. Well, I said your Instagram handle a bunch of times on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I give your Instagram handle for mine at the end of every show. Yep. All right. So uh, speaking Ratings. of Instagram handles. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. We didn't even rate this. Oh, dip. You go first. Uh, okay. Trying to jump the gun. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Um, so I'm going to give this a three out of five because... I think initially I would have given it a higher rating because even though I don't love candy, I actually, my wife found out uh, when we went to the state fair together, I love cotton candy. And so this being hard, I was like, I mean, that's fine. So I was like excited that I had something in my mouth that tasted kind of like cotton candy. But then the more pieces that I ate, the more that I got that caramelized flavor. I was like, you know, it's actually just kind of starting to taste like burned sugar at this point. Uh, and it's not really my jam. And the the way that it sits in my mouth, I haven't like had a chaser yet. So it's just like, really accumulating so over time i think the rating has gone down so Mm -hmm. three out of five that's i think that's pretty accurate i was gonna say i was gonna give it a four out of five but the aftertaste of it definitely lowers it some and i don't know why but there's something about it the aftertaste that's like getting to me um so i'll give it a little higher than that i'll give it like three and a half out of five but well um i was gonna give it a three and a half out of five well, doesn't mean I can't stall. Ahead. I will. Well, he already stole the rating. Nope, you got to pick a different true. number. Three point two five. Three point two five. I'm going there uh, for all of the same reasons. Honestly, I really liked it from the jump. I think I had my mind on the chestnuts, and I'm just was happy to have anything else, anything <laughs> else in my, my mouth. Mind. Um, <laughs> uh, but you say that like you ate chestnuts during the first part of the show. <laughs> well. I mean, it or was in my mind. Still, it's like, so bad that it's, about it's stuck with you a month later. I'm still thinking about it. Um, oh my goodness! But yeah, I think that just cookies for you. I do get the caramelized, like the burnt sugar taste that you're talking about for sure. The more pieces I ate, which has made me not want to eat more. I think like two pieces at a time, probably the best. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just. I don't like how much it's like cotton candy. The taste. I wish really? it was. Yeah, I wish it was kind of less that and maybe more of a honey or other flavoring flavor forward for mm. me. Interesting. All right. So those are the ratings. I guess, actually, would you recommend this to someone? I don't know that we've ever said, would you recommend this or not? We, hit, um, I think we did at the very beginning, like the first few shows. Okay, well, let's hmm. just do it. Let's just do it like this. Best food ever, worst food ever. I'm going to say best food ever. It's pretty good. Sure. I'm going to say Same. try it just because it's traditional korean candy it says right there in the back <laughs> i agree I, if i have to only can choose the binary of best yes. worst yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Say best. i know that our show exists in gray spaces but we can't <laughs> have gray spaces and literally in this episode that we talk about binary <laughs> but, so, yes yeah. i will say yes that's good try anything yes, that says traditional on it so <laughs> really yes, best. or new as we've ever that's, as we've you were talking about some aware. polar opposites we got yeah. heaven hell we got it's true it's the great traditional you know. new. Yeah, they just <laughs> all exist together in Nathan Nowak's body. Well, uh, Nathan Nowak's body, where can people find that if they want to see more <laughs> in of Colorado, it? In Colorado, where can people see, yeah, so find that if they want to see it, if they need more of yes. it in if their need, lives? If you would like the virtual need, body of myself, <laughs> that is the Instagram of N Nowak and of course Nathan Nowak on Facebook. 
And if you'd like his corporeal form, you can find him at 4474 East Wardwick Drive. No, too many fours. Way Colorado. too many fours. Oh, yeah, that's Superstitious. right. Superstitious, <laughs> come on. You're right, 1313 West. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll notice, there is actually no fours in our actual address. And there's a reason. Don't tell people that. Ah, nice. <laughs> oh, gosh. They have, other, they have nine others to choose from. Okay, fours. it's okay. So, <laughs> okay. Like, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, well, you can find me at KJ Relke wherever I want to be found on the internet, uh, which includes but is not limited to Twitter. Sweet. <laughs> I was waiting for the comma to be filled in after, but it was a period. I got no, it. it was, um, <laughs> I just wanted to pick the least, the least, uh, the platform that I use the least. Actually, the platform that I use the least is LinkedIn, but you know, whatever. Sure. Say WhatsApp. Um, I don't even have that. that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Snapchat. You can find me at Patrick in the world on Instagram. If you want to find the show, you can reach us at John G show at uh, all of the different social media platforms. You yeah, can send us your questions, send us your questions via the DM or via the EM. That's the electronic mail. Uh, <laughs> wow. At John cool. G show at just like media.com. You can send um, that to us in the AM or the PM, <laughs> the AM but or no the PM. SM because we don't check our mail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh snail mail he was talking about the snail mail. <laughs> i was like what is um, sm <laughs> but we would also really love it if you left us an r a review or a rating on <laughs> apple podcasts um, you broke the form <laughs> what he said you broke the form it should have been an rm <laughs> i know i was but i couldn't think of a i couldn't think quickly enough of a good m rm yeah. rating man it no uh yeah but if you wanted to you can hop on if you like the show and you like what you hear you, you can always leave us a review and we may read it here on the show if we like it a lot if we don't like it a lot we'll read it too and critique yeah, you. we might still read it out uh, yeah, like we'll okay this we'll uh, read it because <laughs> thanks for we putting are us on blast all about <laughs> growth you know we want to know how we can do better so please let us know leave it make it a five star don't leave us one stars. But yeah, you yeah, can yeah. Leave us a five star rating, but be as belligerent <laughs> yeah. and unnuanced and angry as possible. In the actual review Just part. But take our names and stars. rake it through the mud. Yeah. Please. Um, other than <laughs> that, uh, oh, I do have one quick announcement. Sidebar of the show. Uh, just announced a for NAM in November, National Adoptee Awareness Month. We are, Katie Gagel and I, uh, uh, social media person of the show are co-hosting a adoptee panel that is going to be our reclamation. We have a really a ton of great guests or panelists, I should say. Um, would love if uh, people could come to that. You don't have to, but you can go to the link in my bio for more information and to register. So that's my plug. Totally. Oh yeah, I forgot that we could do plugs, but we don't really. I mean, we, we never have anything to actually like, really specific of to plug all the, the of show. all the people. Live yeah, show. you you probably have the most things to plug, but there you go. All right, cool. Yeah, but. Yeah, I'm hopefully having a bunch more stuff to plug here coming up, but uh, I'll leave it at that. So without further ado, we're going to wrap so this up. So he's plugging his mouth, and we're peacing out. We'll see you next week. <laughs> John Heyo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he waited so long to say that. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, my dad. And on that note, you're